When I mentioned that automakers have an advantage if they choose to use gigapressors, megacasts, or structural battery packs, I still get people telling me, are you just a Tesla fan? The only reason you're saying this is because you're a fan of Tesla. Well, does that mean that I'm also a fan of BYD, of Ford, of Hyundai or Hyundai, as we say in Australia, because they just signed up to use gigapressors, my friends. So all of you who made those comments, those accusations, well, it's time to put up and shut up. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Now, I know this only applies to a very small percentage of people, uh, but, you know, those vocal minority who can be really loud kind of internet trolls, that they say this. They're always saying, uh, if you have an opinion that differs from mine, then you're simply a deluded fanboy. Well, interesting, because now Toyota clearly are on the deluded fanboy train of Tesla. They've said Tesla's engineering is a masterpiece. They've started to, well, put in place their plans on using a gigapress machine, which means that they said, Toyota said, it reduces 88 parts and three hours of work down to literally, I think it was about 10 seconds and one single part. Hyundai and Ford just became customers of Indra. And Indra has said that they will be using gigapressors as well. Now, when will this happen? I don't know. However, Indra is the Italian aluminum casting machine maker that has supplied Tesla with gigapressors, which has really begun to revolutionize car manufacturing. It's brought down the price. It makes cars lighter. It makes them cheaper to manufacture. The French automotive industry, by the way, and some French automakers have begun to target Tesla. They say that this gigacasting is dangerous. It's dangerous to the industry. It's dangerous to you. If you're driving a car with uh, giga, giga presses, gigacasting, uh, structural, whatever that is, megacasts, then you should be in fear of your life. That's what they literally said. And of course, the key reason for this is they're very concerned that they're losing the automotive industry to China and to Tesla. But if you want to see my video where I talked about what the French automotive industry have been saying lately, which is, to be honest, in my opinion, really, really surprising and very bizarre. I'll put a link in the description. Tesla have now been joined by Ford, Hyundai, Toyota, and another European company. So it seems as though the naysayers, and there were a lot of them, and I mean, Inside EVs, I'm sure you guys read that, I've probably read hundreds of people on there who claim to be experts in engineering. They say that they are, of course, whether they are not, whether they are or not, I'd say it's probably pretty unlikely. Over the years, who have said Tesla's gigacasting is a bad idea. It wouldn't work. The automotive industry was well advanced and Tesla was well, well behind everyone else. And gigacasting had been tried before and that wasn't true, in fact. But they said that and that the automotive industry just saw this as a joke. Well, the joke is on you, my friends, because now... Well, the biggest automakers, some of the biggest in the world are joining this new fad. Of course, it's not a fad for Tesla. Tesla has pioneered the use of massive casting machines, also known as gigapressors, to make large single pieces of vehicle underbodies, streamline production, and reduce the work of robots. Here's the thing. Front and rear underbodies cast by gigapressors are combined with battery packs, structural battery packs in some cases, to form a three-piece chassis for battery electric vehicles. And they eliminate hundreds of parts and a lot of processes, a lot of welding, uh, a lot of gluing, a lot of riveting, a lot of that sort of stuff, screwing things together. It's a huge improvement, massive improvement. Here's an idea. People always say, I've seen this comment, even someone messaged this to me the other day. They said electric cars weigh twice as much as internal combustion cars, therefore they're doomed to failure. Well, first of all, the Tesla Model 3 weighs almost an identical total weight versus a Mercedes C-Class. Pretty much the same size car. You can see here how this gives an advantage. Gigacasting is a significant advantage. That's one of the reasons. A Gigapress 6100 which produces a clamping force of over 6,000 tons with a Ford brand printed on it has been assembled and is being tested in Idra's plant in Italy. That's in Northern Italy, by the way, and that happened apparently on Tuesday and Wednesday this week. 
The machine will be installed in an R&D facility in Detroit and used for testing and benchmarking ahead of introducing the presses for production vehicles. In other words, Andrew have just confirmed that Ford will be using this gigapresses in the manufacturing of probably their electric cars within the next 12 months. This is really, really cool for Ford. I mean, Ford have already said, you know what, Tesla's on the right track with using LFP batteries. We're going to do the same thing. They're already doing it in the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Jim Farley's gone, let's accelerate things. Let's use gigapresses as well. I mean, this machine is literally on its way right now to America. I find this stuff pretty cool, pretty exciting when you see other companies say, you know what, they're doing that well. Let's do that too. I think that's a really wise decision. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. An even bigger press, the 9000, Idra's largest and newest model, the size of a house or a tennis court, is being tested nearby. But we don't know who that's for. So there is apparently another European manufacturer. Um, Idra have not disclosed their name. Uh, they don't want their name disclosed yet. Who are going to be using this 9,000 pound press. That's the same press that Tesla used for the Cybertruck. So what would this 9,000 pound press be for? What cars would it be for? I have no idea, but I'm really curious to find out. A source close to the matter said it would be shipped to Hyundai, this 9,000 pound press. But there's another European automaker that has signed up as well. They said it will initially be used for R&D purposes, but the thing is here, Hyundai or Hyundai, they are planning on bringing out an electric pickup truck. Now, could this new 9,000 pound press be used for that new electric pickup truck? I think it's extremely likely. It's going to be interesting to see how, how that goes. And actually, it's going to be interesting now to see their new pickup. The source said Idra is about to sign a supply contract for two 9,000 model presses with a premium automaker in Europe as well. Sounds like it could be Volvo, but the thing is, it wasn't Volvo because Volvo have already purchased two gigapresses from Idra as well for its plant in Eastern Europe. So there's another automaker. They're saying it's a premium automaker. So it's probably either BMW or Mercedes. I'm going to go with Mercedes. I think that's more likely. What does that mean? We've now got six of the biggest automakers in the world saying gigapresses are the future of the automotive industry. Now, of course, Tesla are not really content with the gigapress. So they're moving on to mega castings as well. Mega castings in conjunction with gigapresses and structural batteries are really, in my opinion, really exciting. This is the automotive industry. It's changing at a rapid pace. It's changing quicker than it ever has. And in ways that I think are going to make cars better, they already are, make them lighter, make them safer. Keep in mind, Tesla vehicles are the safest vehicles ever tested under European NCAP safety testing. Six gigapresses are now emerging as the standard for an annual production of 500,000 vehicles. Apparently, that's for some unknown premium European automaker. So I'm really curious who has ordered six of them. Like I said, I think it could be Mercedes, but it also could be the Volkswagen Group. Very probable. If you think about it, six gigapresses, production of 500,000 in Europe, I think that's going to be a Volkswagen Group. How long will it take before they start using them? Hopefully for them pretty quickly, because they've mentioned this. It takes them more than 30 hours to build an electric car. It takes Tesla around 10. This will help Volkswagen actually reduce the price of their manufacturing in Europe. Idra has already shipped 14 presses to Tesla, including two 9,000 models, which are of course for the Cybertruck at the Austin plant in Texas. Now, right now there is Giga Castings that you can see the Giga Casting machine has actually made. They're in Tesla's car park at the Giga factory in Texas. So there's a massive stockpile of these gigapress pieces in the car park there. Now, I know you've probably heard the naysayers saying, oh, there's clearly something wrong with them all. That's the reason they're in the car park. Uh, for some people out there that obviously have nothing better to do than just troll sites and just spread misinformation. It's not actually true. The castings that are sitting in the car park or well, the basically the outdoor area at the factory in Texas are simply there because that's where Tesla is storing them. They're massive things to store. And Tesla actually does this. It already does this with the Tesla Model Y. It stores castings outside. This can be done. It's not actually a problem. So far, Idra has orders for 25 presses with 21 already produced and shipped, including to leading 
tier one parts manufacturers. Now I should mention Magna. Magna are a contract automotive company. They make cars for many automakers in the world. For example, the Jaguar I-Pace is not made by Jaguar, it's made by Magna. This is very common. Uh, Magna have for many years done contract production, even for companies like the Volkswagen Group. Magna say gigapressors are a bad idea and they won't be doing it, which is one reason I think that Magna are going to cease to exist probably not that far from now. In order to, I think, compete with the best, you've got to do what they're doing and try and do it even better. But hey, that's just me. And you know, I'm excited about new technology. I'm excited when I see improvements, when I see companies pushing the boundaries. And I think this is what's happening now in the overall broader automotive industry. Really exciting time. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching.